Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I last created a video, but today I'm happy to share my MBA journey with you, focusing on my experience at Nanyang Business School in Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Whether you are considering an MBA or just curious, stick around because I've got a lot to share. I have broken down this video into different parts, so feel free to skip to any part of the video to learn more. The reason why I created this video is because of two reasons. One is that I have created a video detailing about my undergraduate experience in School of Art Design Media in NTU back in 2020, and I thought it would be great to reflect on my journey in doing a master's degree. Secondly, when I was deciding to do a master's, I couldn't find relatable information about doing an MBA in Singapore. I was hoping that there is a specific video that solely talks about doing a master's program in NTU. So I hope you'll find this video helpful and I hope you don't mind that I will keep mentioning the term MBA in this video. First things first, let's talk about whether you should do a MBA or not. Well, if you are eyeing for a leadership role, being in a strategic management team or perhaps launching your own venture, an MBA could be the key to unlocking these doors. Secondly, think about your industry. Some sectors highly value MBAs like consulting or finance while others may prioritize hands-on experience. But for example, if you are a designer seeking to further your career only in design, then perhaps MBA might not be the best choice. Thirdly, take a moment to evaluate your current skill set. If there are gaps in your knowledge, especially in areas like finance, marketing or strategic planning, an MBA can provide a well-rounded education. For example, I've always wanted to learn about business, but back then my grades weren't good enough to enter a business school. So I eventually did my undergraduate in design. After I've graduated, I'm still very keen in learning about business, so I took the master's program. That is actually a blessing in disguise because now I possess both design and business skills. If you do intend to work in Singapore for a couple of years and gain some experience in working abroad, then doing an MBA could be a good idea because it gives the opportunity to do internships and secure jobs. However, I want to give a caveat that doing a master's is not guaranteed for full-time jobs. You should also consider networking opportunities. MBA programs often have extensive alumni networks and industry connections. If building a professional network is a priority for you, then an MBA can open up valuable connections and mentorship opportunities. My best away from doing an MBA is not acquiring the new knowledge or skills, but really just meeting new people and networking to expand my connections. Lastly, it is also about personal development and achievement. An MBA is not just about academics, but it is also about fostering personal growth, leadership skills, and gaining a broader perspective. From doing an MBA, I find myself to be more confident and gain more awareness about the world around me. Pursuing an MBA is a huge financial investment, especially doing it in Singapore because the cost can be substantial. We are talking about tuition fees, living costs, and the opportunity cost of not working. Honestly, when I decided to do my MBA in NTU, I felt like Thanos when he snapped his fingers and sustained great injury, and the injury is inflicted into my wallet. It was a lot. So we are being really serious about this. Now that we we have gone through whether you should do an MBA, let's talk specifically about doing an MBA in Nanyang Business School in NTU in Singapore. There are a few key reasons why I enjoyed doing my master's degree in NTU and they are, it offers a well-rounded curriculum, there is an overseas business study mission, there is the SPAN which allows your team to work with real companies to solve their problems. These problems can be reflected in your resume and work experience. I will explain each reason further in this video. So NTU is my alma mater and I enjoy learning in the institution because NTU consistently ranks among the top universities globally. According to various international rankings, NTU has secured its position among other elite institutions and it is often ranked in the top 10 or top 20 worldwide. Companies in Singapore, international or not, will usually recognize the university. If you are doing an MBA in NTU, you'll be studying in the newest business school called Gaia. Let me tell you this when I say Gaia is beautiful. It is the largest building made from mass engineered timber in Asia with extensive open areas, terraces and air wells to ventilate the building naturally. Unfortunately, during my time, the building was still being built so I was studying in another building. Either way, both buildings offer a great learning environment. What I really like about the lecture rooms in the old building is the circular concept where you are able to learn from any sitting in the room and it's sort of 
of creates a conducive environment for discussions. NTU is the shortest in program duration. It can be completed in 12 months as compared to other business schools where it can take up to 18 months to 24 months. In my case, I think I've completed it in 10 months. Because it is so short, it is also very intense. I'm talking about occasionally being in school from 9am to 9pm, lots of lectures, meetings, video calls, assignments and projects. But don't let that deter you because it can actually train on your time management and coping with stress. There can be days where it is simply overwhelming but you will be comforted by the fact that you are going through this with your classmate. And also the idea that this was what you wanted back then before you do your masters. Now everyone will have different experiences when they do a MBA. It depends on your specialization track, whether you are staying in campus or out of campus or whether you join the executive committee and many more factors. I'm sharing based on what I have participated during my year. Different tracks allow you to choose specific modules. For example, I chose the strategy and innovation track. This allows me to be in the priority in picking competitive strategy and entrepreneurship modules. I also believe that companies are prioritizing candidates with strategic thinking and management skills, so it is essential to have experience in that. My cohort consists of 58 individuals from different backgrounds and nationalities. We have people from China, India, Korea, Japan, Germany, Singapore, and the list goes on. Different cohort will have different nationalities and they come from a wealth of industries ranging from consulting, business, retail, tech, and many more. Most of them quit their jobs in their home country to do an MBA in Singapore. From the 58 of us, we are split into group A and B. A smaller group enables more opportunities for discussions during lectures. But don't worry, the cohort will be shuffled again in the second and third semester. Before everyone convened in Singapore, there was a virtual introduction call to introduce yourself and meet your new classmates. The session also gave a peek into the people you will meet and work with in the next one year. We were asked to share the food we like and our personalities. I remember fondly I told them my favourite food was oysters and chicken rice. After most of us arrive in Singapore, there will be one week of orientation where you get to participate in various activities and networking sessions. There there were a few sharing sessions by different companies to talk about their company culture and lectures from some C-suite executive. We also get to do personality tests to see how well you work alone or in a team and assessment to get to know yourself better. There is a cultural night where students showcases their country's culture, attractions and dishes. There is also a outdoor bonding session in Sentosa. This day gives you a further look into which classmates you can get along with. Trust me when I say this week is intense. It is back to back with the miss of you still trying to settle down in a new country and it gives you a glimpse of what is coming. If you have opted to stay in the campus, you would have more bonding sessions with other classmates who stay in the campus too. I didn't get an offer to stay in the campus because I stayed in NTU for four years during my undergrad and they have limited space in accommodation for graduate students. The program is split into three terms. In the first semester, everyone will take the same module and the modules are accounting, finance, marketing, operations, leadership, cultural intelligence, technology and e-business and analytics for decision making. Every module incorporates case studies, simulations and real-world projects, allowing students to apply theoretical knowledge to actual business scenarios. I wouldn't recommend doing an internship in your first semester because you will be swarmed with work. I personally enjoy the marketing and technology module the most because I come from a marketing background and also the professor for technology was voted one of the best professors in the world. He is none other than Professor Vijay who is one of my favourite professors. I learned so much from him. If you have no background in account or finance, then get ready to face some numbers because at the end of the semester, you will definitely be familiar with some of the terms and calculations. During the start of the program, you can also opt to join the executive committee. There are various positions up for considerations and you have to campaign for it by presenting a speech and explain why you are the best candidate for the role. Back then, I wish I could have more glimpse into the life of an MBA student in NTU. And so I opted for the VP of Marketing because I wanted to revamp Nanyang's social media account. Thankfully, I was elected together with my co-VP Vaibaf who eventually ended up to be my best friend during and after the program. It was one of the best things that come out of it. During our time, we revamped the Instagram account where we 
share photographs of our classmates and their inspirations behind doing an MBA and titled the series as Humans of MBA. We also share the UN Sustainable Development Goals that our peers are passionate in. Vaibhav and I also initiated the TikTok account of behind the scenes of our journey so that everyone in the cohort can relate and enjoy. Feel free to check the accounts in the description below. After our first semester, most of us are pretty overwhelmed but still coping with the intensity of the program. Thankfully, there was the Overseas Business Study Mission, BSM for short. BSM is a five-day overseas program where you get to visit the companies in the country and learn more about the work opportunities, innovation and developments. In our batch, we were given the choice to choose between Jakarta and Vietnam. I chose Vietnam because of the companies to be visited. There was Tiki, which is an e-commerce tech company and Vina Capital, which is a investment company and many more. I learned so much from the visit and definitely enjoyed myself to the fullest. After the program, me and my classmates went to Fuquo Island in Vietnam for a holiday and it was one of the key highlights of the program. In our second semester, your classmates depends on the group and track you specialize in. For myself, I took strategic management, negotiation, entrepreneurship, digital marketing, corporate governments and ethics, economics and markets. By then, you should be able to handle the classes better because you are used to the pace. I personally like the entrepreneurship and digital marketing because of the professor who are experienced and knowledgeable. During my time, the entrepreneurship professor was Prof Inderjit Singh and the marketing prof was Jonathan Briggs. Do check with your office who is your professor because it changes occasionally. At the end of the year, I also went to Malaysia and Thailand with my classmates, which also turned out to be a memorable and great decision. I had so much fun with them spending the New Year's and on 31st December, I remember we all sat down at dinners and talked about what we are thankful of and what we hope for in 2023. Usually in the second half of the second semester, you might want to look for part-time internships. This give you a head start in job search. In our third semester, I took competitive strategy, strategic transformation, designing and innovating for sustainability, digital transformation. During this time, I would say you should be an expert in time management after months of assignments, meetings and discussions. Also, you have learned so many things by then. My personal faith would be competitive strategy taught by Patrick Gibbons and designing and innovating for sustainability taught by Prof Bo. Annually, NTU will also host the MBA Olympics where we raise funds for a cause. The EXCO gets to pick the charity of choice and I nominated Cemeterians of Singapore which helps to raise awareness in mental health. Individuals from different business schools in Singapore will participate and the sports ranges from table tennis to badminton turn to soccer. It was a fun day and you get to network with students from other schools as well. As VP of Marketing, Vaibhav and I are in charge of the design for the t-shirts, logo, banner and posters. In our final commitments, we were also tasked to design the yearbook. In previous years, the school paid vendors to design the book. We took on the task to form a team to create the yearbook. I think I've spent almost 40 hours designing it from day and night. I actually wrote into the admin office to request them to at least give me a token of appreciation or pay for it as it requires a huge amount of time to design but it was sadly rejected. Nonetheless, it was also one of my best takeaways this year. At the third semester, we will start on SPEN which is the strategy projects at Nanyang. Several projects from different companies and industries will be listed and we have to form our own teams and choose our preferred projects to undertake. There were projects such as go-to market strategy, data analysis, sustainability and many more. Thankfully, I was teamed with two friends who were great teammates. There was only a three of us which is the least number of people in a team and back then we were worried the amount of work will be substantial as the average members in a team was five. Our project was a go-to market strategy for a Finland brewery that wants to penetrate into Singapore market and we were assigned to plan a proposal on how to best enter the craft beer market. The craft beer is called Salama Brewing and I'm proud to say that our team's project was one of the most fun projects because we get to drink the client's beer every time we meet potential stakeholders. We had to meet bar owners and distributors and share with them the client's craft beer. Craft beer is not cheap in Singapore and it can go up to $18 per can. Eventually, we managed to find one of the biggest distributors to bring in several kegs and cracks of craft beer all the way from Finland to sell in Singapore. It was highly rewarding to see our efforts come into fruition. During the program, you can also opt to join case competitions and get a chance to travel to America or Canada for competitions. I joined the A4S sustainability competition with my teammates and we basically have to propose a business idea that is related to nature. We eventually got to the final round and were invited to fly to Toronto for the final presentation. Thankfully, we engaged in first place with $10,000 reward with tough competitions from other B-Schools. After which, my teammate and I also had a short layover in San Francisco to explore
explore the city. I would like to thank my stellar teammates for their great ideas and work. I swear it was fun to be able to travel during school term and I would highly recommend you to consider joining one because you can add that experience in your resume too. There will be experienced mentors that you can choose to help you with your career and life development. Every MBA candidate will be assigned with a mentor by the second semester. Some of them may be their own boss or consultants or professors in NTU. Do tap on that opportunity to learn more from them. Based on what I've heard so far, Elvin is a great mentor. There is an office who are in charge of your program during the year and they coordinate everything and keep you posted with any updates or changes on courses. You will work closely with them if you are in the exco. They hold feedback sessions after every semester and understand the students better and what they like and do not like and try to improve on the program. There is a career office where the staff will assist you with your job search and refine your resumes. But my advice would be to start networking the moment you start your MBA. The career office is not solely responsible in finding you a job. They could also assist but the rest is really in you. I'm going to be very honest with you and say that it is not easy to find a job in Singapore because the government supports the local first. Companies have to justify why they should hire you instead of a local. However, if you have a wealth of industry knowledge and experience, the chances of you getting hired could be higher. But don't let that deter you from doing an MBA because master's degree can also help in your overall resume and experience. I have also included a link below to share an article on how to secure jobs in Singapore. Besides that, I have also shared a link in my description to my favourite local food places and attractions lesser known to tourists to visit in Singapore. At this point, if you enjoy watching what I'm sharing, please give this video a like because it will help to boost the visibility for other individuals who wants to pursue an MBA in NTU. During the program, we have speaker sessions where the club chairs will invite relevant guest speakers to the campus to talk about their experiences and share new knowledge. I will advise you to join these sessions because you can take away something new. You can also opt to share your expertise. For example, I conducted a sharing session on personal branding with my classmates and how we can leverage LinkedIn to showcase our experience and improve our employability. In May, you will have more or less completed most of your modules in NTU. Then you might want to decide whether you want to graduate, do an internship or exchange. In an internship module, you will be working in either a local or an MC for a few years. You can also opt for a summer or full-term exchange program in other countries. I opted for a summer program in Paris where I learned more about luxury marketing and it was the best decision ever. I had a fantastic two weeks journey where we had class from morning until afternoon and me and my classmates would go to shopping or there is always an event happening in town. I made more friends and had the best time of my life in France. One of our assignments was actually going to a luxury boutique like LV to evaluate their customers service. It was so fun. Going and exchange was truly one of the best decision ever. I also have other classmates who opted for a full term exchange which lasted for three to four months in America. It really depends on what you want to do. As of now, five to six months after the program has ended, some of our classmates who have returned to their home country to work or some who have found full-time jobs in Singapore. Here are some important tips that I learned during my time in NTU. Communication is important in teamwork. Regardless of how stressed you are, always, always be respectful to your classmates. Thankfully, most of my teammates are easy to work with. I have heard horror stories where some of our classmates don't work well with others and would scold their teammates, some even to the brink of tears. It ruins the relationships and reflect badly on the individual. There is no need for big quarrels because at the end of the day, this is an assignment and it does not affect your salary or job whatsoever. Be understanding and have a good communication. Be sensitive to other people's culture. As we all come from different nationalities, it would be tempting to impose one's belief into another person. But we should all bear in mind that everyone is equal when it comes to learning and no one should have a higher authority than the other person. Be sensitive when discussing certain topics. I would like to shout out to my close MBA friends who have accompanied me through the ups and downs of this 10 months long program. The admissions team, Damon, Sundari and Helen are very helpful and I enjoyed chatting with them. I've been in contact with them since the interview and they are always so friendly. If you do get to do an MBA in MBS, please say hello to them for me. Shout out to my close friends Vibav, Jake, Leo, Zora, Ashlyn, Jeremy and so many more people. All in all, if you ask me if I regretted doing an MBA, I would say no. I didn't regret doing it. I wouldn't have known where I would be if I didn't do an MBA. I always knew I wanted to do it. I guess it is also the little joys in doing this program like going to a new country if you are non-Singaporean or getting food in the canteen with your peers in between classes and 
gossip or as we call tea and being served tea. It was a fun and once in a lifetime kind of experience because most of us would probably only do one masters in our life. My time at Nanyang Business School was enriching and rewarding. The curriculum and diverse courses and all the networking opportunities all contributed to a great MBA experience. I will also highlight that there are other masters program offered in NTU and not just a MBA. You can have specializations such as marketing science and finance. If you are considering an MBA or have specific questions about Nanyang Business School, feel free to drop them in the comments below or email me or the office. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I know very well how stressful it can be when it comes to deciding whether you should do an MBA, especially when it involves a lot of money and a significant amount of time. Let me know if you have any concerns and I'm more than happy to share my experience. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.